Well, I really appreciate all of you sticking around to the very end. I know it's been a pretty long day, a uh, lot of exciting presentations that we were able to hear. And uh, let me tell you, our presentation will be brief and sweet. I know that uh, you are eager to get back to your room and relax or head out to Dixie Chicken, so I will not stand in the way. <laughs> so, but both me and Steve are really excited to share with you about the adaptive traffic signal system that we deployed along State Highway 242 uh, in Houston. So before I start, let me give you a brief overview of what we're going to talk about. First, we'll talk a little bit about the corridor, <coughs> then I'll talk a little bit about the adaptive traffic signal system in, it, in itself, then the ACS light uh, system that was used for uh, State Highway 242, then the traffic signal and the system uh, equipment uh, requirements. And then Steve is going to talk about the actual implementation of the ACS light, some of the things that were needed to program it, and finally, uh, a, a brief summary. So for those of you that are familiar with the Houston area, know that State Highway 242 is north of Houston. But those that are not familiar, it is near Woodlands. And it is in a very rapidly growing uh, part of Houston. There is a lot of growth on the north side of Houston. And you all know that along with the growth comes traffic. So Texas has been having some challenges in, uh, with that corridor and uh, have done multiple iterations of signal timing. So the corridor that we, be, we were asked to help Texas with included six Actually, a total of seven signals, starting with, uh, with I-45 at uh, uh, State Highway 242, all the way to Gosling. But we implemented adaptive signal timings only for the six signals that are shown in red. As you can see from this picture, this was taken from a vantage point of an overpass that was recently constructed uh, that feeds directly into State Highway uh, 242. You can see one, two, three, four signals just in one picture. So you can see the close proximity of these signals one to another. And this was taken during an off-peak uh, period. Uh, and even then, you can see some, some amount of traffic. But during the peak hours, this is really uh, congested. Why, why is this uh, corridor a candidate for something like an adaptive traffic signal system? And, and one of the reasons was the very unpredictable traffic patterns that existed in that area. You know, we all know that Texas A&M is the largest uh, university in Texas. But for those that are not Aggies, let me tell you that uh, there is another college system called Lone Star College System that has probably more students, or at least twice as many as Texas A&M. But the main difference is it's distributed over multiple campuses. But one of their major campuses is located just north of State Highway 242. And with their schedule and their class time, it creates an erratic traffic pattern in that area. Along with it, there are multiple major residences on the east side, along with churches, shopping centers, hospitals, all of that make this a very unpredictable corridor as far as traffic is concerned. Let me now talk a little bit about the adaptive traffic control system in itself. One of the key things about an adaptive traffic control system, all of you are familiar with traffic uh, control systems. It has evolved over time, and now it is pretty uh, responsive to traffic, even if it's an isolated. But one of the key things that uh, traffic signals don't do is that it does not monitor the traffic uh, constantly and make timing adjustments. We have predetermined timing plans in it, and that is what it goes by. So uh, adaptive traffic control takes it a step further by making adjustments based on the real-time traffic conditions out in the field. So even though adaptive traffic control systems, as many of the technology that we have, was pioneered in the US, uh, other countries in Europe and in Australia in particular took the lead in the 70s and the 80s to advance it much further than the US. And then somewhere in the late 90s, 2000, the US got back on, uh, on, the, on this particular technology and just invested heavily in it. 
So there are quite a few adaptive systems uh, available in the market right now. Some of the major ones are uh, schools, stats, roads, OPAC, InSync, ACS light. And the one that we use for State Highway 242 is uh, uh, ACS light. So why ACS light? ACS light is an adaptive control software that was developed by the Federal Highway Administration. As I mentioned, there was a lot of reluctance within the uh, engineering community, especially the traffic signal uh, uh, engineers and also the signal technicians to adopt uh, adaptive traffic control systems when it initially came on. One of the main reasons why they were reluctant was the high cost involved with it. And most of them thought it was kind of like a voodoo box or a, a black box. So they were very reluctant to adopt this uh, new technology. So FHWA took upon itself to understand what the issues were and said, maybe if we can reduce the installation cost and the operations and to make it much simpler, let's try to do that. And that was one of the reasons why they started a collaborative effort in 2002. And the major partners that were involved were Siemens, University of Arizona, Purdue, and a few critical, uh, a few controller manufacturers like Siemens, Peak, McKay, and Econolite. Those were the four controllers that were involved in this uh, collaborative effort. It took about four to five years of uh, research and development before they rolled out their first uh, 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 software for field implementation. And they picked four locations for implementation in 2007. Houston, Texas happened to be one of them. And it was implemented along State Highway 6 in Houston. And the other locations were one in Ohio, one in Florida, and one in California. However, the Houston's ACS light was deactivated shortly. However, but Techstart still retained the license since it was implemented on a state uh, corridor. In 2012, uh, Techstart, uh, thanks to Uganda, Ugansa, and Steve, uh, when they were looking at options for uh, 242, decide, decided to maybe try ACS Light for that corridor since it does seem like a good solution for Techstar. So now let me give you a quick overview of the features of ACS Light. It is primarily for closed loop arterial system, not for a grid, although uh, you know it can be uh, uh, made to evolve into for uh, other applications, but right now it is primarily for uh, corridors. It is designed to adapt the, slips, uh, the splits and the offsets. It, it doesn't change the cycle length. It doesn't even change the phase sequence. You know, people that are familiar with, uh, uh, with traffic patterns know that that is something that uh, motorists don't really prefer. So at this point in time, it doesn't even change the phase sequence. So primarily the, the splits and offsets. It does have a limitation of up to 32 signals that can be connected to this particular system, ACS light system. Uh, if you're using a communication such as uh, less than ideal, say like a 9600 bits per second uh, communication, then it is limited to only 12 signals that can be connected. But if you have a good uh, fiber communication or something like that, you can go up to 32. The beauty of ACS light is that you can pretty much use what you have. If it is an NTC IPA compliant system that you have, you can pretty much use the existing cabinet, you can use the existing controller, and you can uh, let it uh, run the ACS light system. The adaptive computations are all done in a single controller. Or you, you, can, you, you can use a field laptop, or you can run it off of your uh, TMC. So it does give you the option of either you know, just having it as an isolated system running off a field tested uh, laptop. So one of the, remember I told you that the it doesn't do cycle lengths. So cycle lengths are based on time of the day that the, uh, the traffic signal engineer has to develop and program into ACS light or into the controller and it goes off of that. But it does give you the ability to specify the optimization step. It doesn't do it every cycle. You have the ability to do it every five to 10 uh, minutes. So it will wait, wait for a, a couple of cycles where it senses a particular movement to be extremely heavy, then it makes the adjustments. 
And the adjustments, it, it, these are also user definable, and uh, Steve is going to get into some of those details. But typically, the split, these split and offset adjustments are made in very minor or small increments, so that the motorist or the user don't even feel it. At the same time, it produces the effect uh, that we are desiring as engineers or uh, transportation uh, professionals. So. What I have shown in here is a quick exhibit. What you see in red is where the saturation rate is over 90%. What you see in yellow is something between 85 and, and 90. And what is uh, green is something that is less than 85. So it will steal time from something that is less than 85 and give it to those plants that seem to have a higher saturation rate. That is the algorithm that uh, ACS Life uses. It also does adjustments on the offset that uh, uh, he may get into in this part of the presentation. So let, in, in summary, what ACS Flight provides is pretty good benefits with minimum investment. Like I said, it, somewhere between five to 10,000 is all you will have to spend you know, if you have a reasonably good detection system running for that particular signal to implement ACS Flight. So, what were the existing infrastructure that we had for State Highway 242? The traffic signals, as I mentioned, one diamond and six standard intersections. Six of them are currently running ACS light. They include same loops all the way to go off links. Most of them had uh, split facing on the side streets. This was primarily because of the unique geometry along the corridor, as I showed you in the previous picture, pretty wide median which uh, required them to have split side street phasing, which was a disadvantage for traffic operations, but we came to find out that it did work pretty well with the ACS site. The existing detection that was available along the 242 corridor was uh, vivid. They were not all very functional, so TechStart already was in the process of uh, converting a lot of the signals that they maintain to loop detectors. So uh, that was something that uh, we did for this particular corridor also. One of the good things that we had going for us was there was an excellent fiber communication all along uh, 242. I'll get a little bit into the challenges that we had because I showed you an overpass from I-45 onto 242 that was just constructed. It just got constructed about four months ago and all through all through construction, the the crew cut the fiber line, and the system was almost inactive for about two years, all during the construction, and we just couldn't keep it uh, running during that time. So, the existing cabinets that were out there were NEMA cabinets with uh, Siemens controllers, and we used them primarily to uh, for the ACS light deployment. The communications uh, for what I'm going to talk about here is what are the general requirements for ACS light implementation. This is not specific for 242. You need to have either an IP or a serial type of communication. The one we are using for 242 is IPS. Worker detection. It can be any detection technology. It can be radar, it can be wavelets, it can be loops. Uh, for 242, it's uh, loops. It is ideal to have one detector for each phase and a lane by lane uh, monitoring is preferable. And that is what we designed for 242 and that was installed as part of the implementation. Stop bar detector needs to be within 100 feet of the stop bar. Uh, advanced, advanced detection in dilemma zone, although it is, it is good, it is not required. So we have it as optional. And if it is a very congested uh, corridor with a lot of traffic, it is better to use mid-block or exit detectors. And that is something that we are using for 242 also. And with all these new detectors, and you know, you will probably need to add more uh, detector cards if you are using an existing cabinet. So before we implemented ACS Lite, we had a few tasks, and that was uh, during that process, we identified some of the deficiencies in the existing controller cabinet, be it, uh, you know, shortage of load switches or card, uh, you know, uh, detector cards. 
we identified that, and also we did a lot of uh, traffic data collection, 24-hour counts, turning movement counts, travel time runs. Travel time runs were to be used to evaluate how effective the implementation was, or the ACS was after implementation. <coughs> For the signal timing deployment, we use our age-old uh, tool of Syncro uh, to develop the base, uh, the baseline plans that we use to run the, the time of the day uh, sequence. Uh, I mean, time of the day plan. Uh, as I mentioned, you had to program a, a basic uh, plan, and then ACS will modify it to adapt to the uh, traffic conditions in the field. And with, and also we made sure that the communications and the detection was all working. And these, what you see here are the additional detectors that we had. Uh, Texod already had loop detectors on the side. So what you see in purple were the additional detectors that we added uh, to uh, run the ACS system. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Steve. <laughs> Okay, this is how we basically set up our, our ACSI system. Basically, you need to have one software first. So software can be installed in any kind of computer-based equipment. In the very beginning of the Highway 6 project, we installed a standalone little, little computer sitting out, out on the field. Because at that time, tech stars, Houston District was still running a T1 network, and I don't think T1 network can support ACSI as efficient as a the kind of network we have right now. So from there we migrate into the once one tries to upgrade the ATM system and we, we install that into the laptop. But that laptop was sitting out of field because I still don't trust the network capability can handle the data communication at a certain rate. So now trans are finally eventually upgrade to the Ethernet network now. So by now our central software is located in our office building now. That's about thirty miles from where the system's running. So everything communicates to the Ethernet network right now. And if you under, if you know anything about closed loop system, every most of closed loop system has a local master to sync up the clock or do for children, whatever local command just like a response to system. And that's also the same as ACS Live. It requires some sort of a, a master to run the intersection. So that's why the software the, the software acts as a master, it will sync the clock and also tell what time of day plan to run. And that's why basically what the ACSI master does. And before you even start it, you make sure you have to you have to prep your network, then the part of your network also your signal, make sure your signal intersection can handle the ACSI system. Basically you just upgrade your controller. Make sure it controls NTCIP compliance because the uh, NTCIP call for pattern and also time of day programming, they're different than regular down split. That's why it's, a, lot, a lot of these things are still using SEMA controller. The space of CPC and control is still using the old time based coordination and you will not operate with the uh, ACS side. So you require NTCIP protocol to standardize that. And on the detector, your AC your system will only run good as your detection system. If you imagine if there's something that got constant cough, if the detection failure and you don't know it, and either give it zero percent input or hundred percent input. And that will skew your data point like crazy. Basically, you go to give all the split time to some to, to, a, to a direction. Either have no cars there when you have 100%, or they don't. You cut the time back so short that when you have zero percent input. So detector detection is very, very critical. It's critical. And one of the issue we have we have with Highway Six because we use the video detection and video detection guy is good and bad and. With this particular system, it's not very good for it because uh, we got a lot of issues with uh, constant call, locking it up, or dropping a call, not holding it up. That's a, that's a, that's a, I think the radio detection come out a little premature before they are ready to, to be deployed. But that's pretty much, at that time, probably the best technology they have at that time. So, so that's a little bit issue we have. And next thing you gotta have is counselor. Like I said, the communication is critical for ACSI system. The faster you can data, your, your central software can talk to the 
intersection, the more accurately it can react to it. So communication is very critical for the system setup. So since we have Ethernet network, so that's pretty fast than the most of serial communication. And with any kind of Ethernet network, you gotta watch out IP addressing. As long as your IP does not conflicting, then you'll be okay. <coughs> ACSI using a window-based software. So basically, the graphic user interface is very, very friendly, and just like typical any kind of Windows software program, you can just click it and use a mouse and to adjust it. And that's why basically what's from the screen you see right here, that's why it is. That's basically just use a mouse and click on any of these tabs and you go to different pages and set up your requirement. And like, like I say, it's similar to very, any, any other central software out there, pretty much look at the same. And they all have the same equal way of uh, adjusting it. So they all still window based anyway. So not, a lot of software is all window based now. It's not like back then, you still have to use a DOS com and use a DOS programming, and that's even more difficult to do at that time. So, first thing we do when you set up an ACSI system is to configure your detectors. The detection is very critical. You gotta tell them exactly how far the, the detection is apart from between the section and how far from the subwire. The reason being to do so is uh, you calculate offset. Because you need to know how far the child, how fast the vehicle travel and between the sections, so you know when to adjust the offset to clear the traffic through the intersection, from the intersection. And after that, once you set up the detection, you set up the type base. It's pretty much like typical type base coordination in any controller. You set up your, that's why I say NTCIP is critical, because this is what NTCIP recognize. They run based on panel of data plan and also run on pattern. So, so this, once you set up this, and you're ready to go on to the next step. Green configuration. It requires a lot of validation for the system of complex as say ACS Live. It requires everything you have to validate before you run. So you need to know what sequence you're running. Like like currently the ACS that system requires since you cannot change the sequence or change the pretty much if you cannot change the sequence from relay so they, they have to validate certain sequence every one. That's why you have to validate sequence three on our intersection right now. So majority is all running two ring. You got one, two, three, four, and five, six, and they all run split base. So that's conformity is best for the ACS side. If you got some unique intersection that like right now we're running like a six phase and you got a phase approaching to it, it's sometimes it gets a little bit confused for the system. So kind of nice, we have just all the intersections all have all six faces on. So we're going to split phase on all the intersections. And phase data, this is just basically all your mean, your mean time, your green, uh, your max time, and your yellow and red time, and your pet time. Because uh, the system need to know, make sure what you're putting in the system is not violating what is required to run your type phase coordination. Because you, if your time based coordination is valid, you just drop free or not run. And pretty much your, the software, the software will, will see that. Will see that when, when you try to validate it. it. It will not validate if your time split does not add up to your min time requirement. So your min, if you, if, if you put too much min time in it, the system automatically will kick out and say, hey, you're my, I do not understand your plan. And then I'll go and then I'll kick you out. And pattern split plan. Yeah, the multiple split plan because uh, because it has a it does not want to go on transition. When control goes on transition, it kind of slow it down. You, you got to have a ACS. I find ACS does in minimum transition time. Every time the control goes on transition, you tend to slow it down. Also, also create a traffic backstop. I go a little faster. 
Okay, with ACS, so we got to go to two settings. One is global setting, one is a control specific. But global setting basically just tell you fun hat, but how much time, how aggressive you want the system to do. You can control how much offset to pull out and how much uh, how much your split time you can take away from each time you do adjustment. Also you can tell you how much how much time you have to run this system before you go to the next plan. And that's all the global setting. And control specific. You can tell which space you take time away from, like one, two, three, four, five, six. Whatever you put whatever there's a check mark, you can I can take the time away from. And bias thing mean make sure you favor these two directions or favor whichever direction you want. Extra check mark. Like, like on two on two point gossip, you want to you can take time away from everybody but still favor these three three approach. That's what basically that is. And once everything is set up, you can pass the validation test and you just turn the system and run. And these are a couple of things you can monitor the operation of it. To tell you how much screen time you use, utilize, or how much time you receive. And this, this screen shows your facial utilization and how much each direction can be utilized. And you can tell certain face use more because it has heavier demand on it. And detector status. Like I said, detection is very critical, and you, from here you can tell if the detection is working or not, and tell you the based on volume and occupancy each detector is receiving it. So you know how to adjust based on, once the program see that input, and you adjust based on how it's demand. And for pro profile, this one is basically just tell you how good is the offset. If you really much want to see a lot, turn go to a green bed. So if your platoon is coming on this side, it'll tell you the offset is off. So you need to either adjust the offset or measure the distance, make sure the distance is correct. And this is what you see is the screen I like a lot. In red, it tell you how much time you take away, and green, tell you how much time you give it to, and you have to see a cycle length here and offset right here. So constantly, and that's time span, you tell you how much time it changes its a pattern, and how much time you take away from previous time to next time. So from here, you know how much time you adjust based on that. And based on how we test right now, based on how we collect the data right now, we get about trouble time ten percent reduction and delay improve improve ten percent and then delay reduce twenty five percent. And how we measure is that we see less congestion on corridor because they can progress much smoother and then we got fewer complaint calls. One of the measurement we the tool we measure is very based on complaint call. If complaint calls reduce that tells us that our system is working pretty good. At least it's working. So we just complain about And the middle has queues. And queues to me is very critical, especially for the left turn movement. And I ACS are very good at doing that because it can handle the it will not the vehicle queue up on the left turn through, through traffic movement. Because uh, that's not very good because if, you, if the left turn movement queue up through through queue up through through movement, you reduce your capacity on your on your roadway. And next step, what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to include diamond into which is 45 to 42. And I know diamond is not a PTI diamond, but we have to do some creative sequence 